All right, if you're in the hall and you're a member of the committee, I'd ask that you come in and let's get this one bill knocked down. The hour is late, and I know many have to to make it to the house.
got we pulled we pulled your deal because we didn't get the copies in time, so we're gonna do it tomorrow. Yeah. I want to go ahead and convene this full committee of Judiciary Non Civil. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, before we get started, Representative Smith, if he wouldn't mind giving a, a, one of the, a good word here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's all pray. Lord Jesus, we just come you, to you today, Lord, just thanking you for the breath of life, most of all for salvation, that our relationship with you might be restored. Lord, we thank you so much for that. We ask, Lord, that you be with us as we go through legislation, Lord, just give us the wisdom, give us the discernment that goes with that wisdom, Lord, as we go forth and try to do what's right. We ask these things in your sweet and holy name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend M. Smith. Uh, before we get started, I want to say uh, we've only got one bill here. And for those of you that haven't been following, we've been in uh, some form of judicial non-civil in the house since um, uh, before lunch and I want to take this time to um, give thanks to uh, uh, the subcommittee chairman uh, both uh, Chairman Sessler and Chairman Reeves uh, both of these gentlemen are class acts and um, they're capable of really digging down in legislation and I really appreciate it uh, um, and I uh, couldn't give you guys enough uh, thanks and and that's not to uh, to discount the, the committee members I appreciate the work you do here uh, that said, we're going to only consider one piece of legislation tonight. Um, it's House Bill 601. Um, the author is uh, Re Representative Stevens, but is not, not here. So uh, Representative Newton or Chairman Newton is, is uh, going to um, uh, explain the bill. So um, without further ado, Chairman Newton, thank you for being patient with us. And uh, I'm going to let you explain what the bill does and, 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 and the, the necess necessity for it. So and, and committee members, I, I know you guys have some long meetings, and, uh, but I can tell you on, on behalf of all the non-judiciary related, uh, we appreciate you getting it right and giving it the bills the time they deserve, and I look forward to you doing that with this bill. I'm representing today for uh, uh, Chairman Stevens. Uh, it really is a bit of a continuation on a bill that this, this particular body passed a few weeks ago, House Bill 367, with Chairman Parrish and Stevens and, and Reeves, I think, on the update. Uh, and in that bill, it included a, a medication called Epidiolex, which is approved by the FDA for treatment of some rare conditions, severe seizures. Uh, in particular, that is one of the only FDA-approved substances that uh, is derived from cannabis, the cannabis plant. Even though Epidiolex has less than 0.1% THC, it still would normally automatically default into Schedule One. Uh, what this body did, it included it in the descheduling. What House Bill 601 does is it, it, it provides that other medications, this one in particular and others that are derived from cannabis, if they are FDA approved and only if they're FDA approved, they would not default automatically to Schedule 1 here or Schedule 5. It would, it, or one, the 1 through 5 scale, it would, uh, uh, the F Board of Pharmacy would still have the option to do that, but it would not be an automatic default uh, that would happen. If we can look on, uh, let's see, uh, page 42 of this legislation, uh, you can see at that point it, it is uh, descheduled. Um, what this bill will do on lines 16 and 17 and 39 and 40 are uh, strictly for medications that have had FDA approval. And I will make a point, this is not emergency use authorization that we're getting with a lot of our COVID treatments and vaccines and different things. This is actually full FDA approval. That means clinical trials, in this case, three more than, or three randomized controlled trials uh, that, that proved that the medication uh, was superior to placebo, superior to other treatments, and therefore it went through the full FDA approval. What 601 would do is to allow this same, that same standard to apply to other medications in the future if they go through the full FDA approval process. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, this is a bill that, that uh, law enforcement is not opposing. It's not expanding anything on uh, medical marijuana, the whole registry process. This is completely different with a, uh, with a medication that's gone just like opiates and sedatives and, and medications for other medications for seizures like Ativan and um, controlled substances, this would uh, allow those, uh, to this particular uh, formulation to not automatically default to Schedule 1. Thank you, Chairman yes. Newton. I sure. appreciate that. Um, did you have anything else? I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, no, there, there have been 
the, the studies, this, this medication is just for particular rare conditions of a couple of types of childhood seizures that are just resistant to all the other normal, or I'm sorry, the more uh, common medications that, that work for seizures. Uh, and so uh, it's a very needed medication. We've had uh, Children's Hospital of Atlanta, Chief of Pediatric Neurology, they, they strongly support this. They've had, uh, actually some of the studies were done over at the Medical College of Georgia and Augusta University. And so the, uh, there's, a, there's a good bit of uh, appreciation for this and the families that have access to a medication, in particular that's FDA approved, un unlike some other ways of, of, uh, of treatment with cannabis-related products, whether cannabidiol or ones including low THC, uh, this one, by being FDA approved, is a, the, the, the physicians, the neurologists can carefully regulate and know exactly what doses are appropriate uh, because of the consistency that comes with an FDA approved substance. Thank you, uh, um, Chairman Newton. I've got a, um, if you have anything else, I'm going to ask that if there's any questions from the uh, committee. And I got a couple lights blinking here, so uh, I'm going to go to first uh, Chairman Setzler. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, th this is just a point of clarification. I want to make sure we're clear on what we're what we're passing here. I mean, I know um, Epidiolex has a very very low. I mean, against it's 0.1 percent by weight. And I think even you know you know it's it's even below the like a third of the level that you'd have even for like medical not medical but for um, CBD um, hemp you know oh. industrial hemp you know. Um, question is you know we, we have had things come through here where we ask the questions is there a threshold um, I mean do we open ourselves up to a an activist um, FDA that says hey you know we're not going to have any limits on um, on THC content I mean I know we, we we have had bills come in here before in fact we had a bill that cruised through under the under the guise of low THC oil that was uh, would have allowed 80% you know, honey oil you know, 20 ounces of it, you know, $60,000 of street value to be probably get put out on the streets as low THC oil because there wasn't a definition around around what that was. So, and, and I mean, I, I'm following clearly what you have in mind. Is there a is is there any framework around like a max THC limit on this? I mean, if if, if the if if one administration said, hey, we th we're gonna we're gonna de you know we're we're gonna take, um, you know. A, medical marijuana through trials and we're good hey if, as long as you're less than in, in any percentage by weight is was that a consideration or is that i mean i, I i'm not I'm, I'm not fighting these things I, I'm, I'm not fighting this fight anymore really much um but in this room things that were there were just some details we've tightened up in the past and is, is that is that is that the intention to have no limit or is that is that really not relevant here well i, I do think one one of the key considerations in this is that uh, the FDA approval, and you bring up a good point about, say, a, 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 an FDA that was doing something different than they may have done in the past yeah. with, uh, with maybe less scrutiny or less rigor. Um, and so I do look at this, and by preserving the State Board of Pharmacy's ability to still control the scheduling of medications in Georgia, uh, this would not supersede their ability to schedule it. However, the State Board of Pharmacy wouldn't. It, this just changed the default to where the State Board of Pharmacy could still ske schedule it however they deem necessary, but it just wouldn't do. I don't know if Mr. Thompson wants to, if you can clear that up, or is that? 100%. Okay. I'm, I'm just I'm just framing that question for everybody so we understand there's, we're not putting a limit on THC content, it's, 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 which is something we, we often will ask the question about, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate um, uh, the the question uh, the Chair asked. I, I think uh, with the, um, sort of stopgap uh, with the, the Board of Pharmacies is still able to uh, classify it that um, we still have the opportunity in the event there is an activist FDA uh, to stopgap it by scheduling scheduling the, uh, the drug. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Representative Gravely. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, the author of the bill and the presenter of the bill as well. Um, that's a good point. The way I read this bill, uh, to, to Chairman Setzler's point, is because Epidiolux is derived from a Schedule I um, substance, substance yeah. it, th there was some hang-ups there. Even though it had gone through all the FDA trials and approvals, there was, there was still some conflict. And so this is essentially just saying, even though it's derived from here, it's gone through this process, which not every uh, medication gets to go through, 
that's derived from this substance. So we're gonna we're gonna make sure this is all right. If if states and their board of pharmacy see differently, they can do that, right? Yeah. But this just kind of takes it down to another level. Let me ask this question though, and this may be a different conversation. Um, from an active, whether whether we call it an activist FDA or, um, or with a new administration in Washington D.C., and I know there's talk of just descheduling the 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 substance altogether from a schedule one down to whatever tier they decide or whatever what happens in that instance when you have when marijuana is no longer a schedule one substance does that affect this does that change this or does it really has no effect on this at that point right my understanding of the state board of pharmacy would still have uh, that be uh, able to uh, short of short of a federal preemption yeah. uh, that specifically removed it uh, my understanding is, is our stopgap here is our state board of pharmacy so the if, state if, if the FDA have... ever was allowing something that the state wanted to continue to control they, they would have the right to schedule in the absence of a federal law that overrode gotcha question answered Thank you. Uh, representative McLaurin <coughs> thanks mr. chair and thanks for the explanation that I've gotten so far uh, in terms of what's coming I think I misunderstood and thought that this was a brand new drug, but when when, when did the FDA actually ap approve this? 2018. Okay. Right, I believe. And and SB 481, I guess, was the vehicle last term for trying to do substantially the exact same thing that this bill is doing, right? And it was introduced in like March, and I imagine COVID happened. And is that basically the story on why the Senate bill did not move last term? Okay. And and just so I'm understanding, and if we're all asking the same question. I apologize, but the reason that it's in Schedule 5 is because we were thinking about the drug with specificity when we put it in Schedule 5, but it turns out that the legal implication is that it ends up being in Schedule 1 anyway. That's basically right. So it's that the Schedule 1, the conflict, there is a conflict as, as far as how it's scheduled. Is that basically right? Yeah, thank you, Representative McLaurin. Graham Thompson on behalf of Greenwich Biosciences, which uh, developed uh, Epidiolex, exactly right. So what, what we're trying to solve for as this committee passed House Bill 367, so Epidiolex, it goes through the rigorous review of FDA approval, <clears throat> but because it's derived from cannabis and the other two definitions that we're trying to add in an exemption for FDA approved you know medications um, it automatically defaults to schedule one and as you know when you have a schedule one substance doctors can't write prescriptions and patients can't right. access the medicine so now you're waiting for the state board of pharmacy to meet in the interim when when the legislature's out uh, they can do things by emergency rule uh, but nobody except for the legislature you have the unique power to add things to the schedule and remove them based on the recommendations of the State Board of Pharmacy. So yes, um, when, a, when it's FDA approved only because it is derived from cannabis, only because it has low THC oil, and only because it does have very trace amounts of THC, it would automatically default to Schedule One, and there's no patient access. Obviously, State Board of Pharmacy retains all ability to, to, to add us to Schedule One if they see fit, uh, but we just don't want that to be the default. Two, two to two and a half year patient access problem that Thanks. we're solving. You nailed it. Thank you. Thank you, Representative McLaurin. We have any any more questions from the, the committee? I'd like to make a motion at the appropriate time. Um, hearing no more discussion now. Now is the appropriate time. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion do pass on House Bill six hundred one. We have a uh, motion do pass and a second for House Bill 601, LC 338668. Do, um, do I hear any, uh, does anybody have any amendments? Any amendments? No, no amendments? <laughs> well, with no amendments, <laughs> then I'm going to go ahead and That's call it. That's a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, we, we've got a, um, a motion and we got a second and no amendments and, and no more discussion. Any discussion? 
With that, I'm going to call the question for House Bill 601, LC 338668. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The measure passes on the rules. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we are going to adjourn this full committee. I appreciate everybody who stayed late tonight. Thank you.